Hello everyone, in uh, this week's video we're going to be continuing our little command kind of uh, crazy Cold War goodness here and uh, kind of bringing our scenario that got a little creepy in the sense that it got a little too large and uh, back to a little bit more normalcy or reality here. So if you remember from last time uh, we took a look at the wide scenario of again this is the entire United States basically being invaded by over 600 red bombers and uh, I thought what we would do is we'd simply take that scenario and make it a little bit more manageable. So what I've done here already and kind of getting this all set up today is I've basically deleted all all the other assets that were left in the United States, as well as our bombers up in the north there. And I'm basically going to concentrate just on kind of the Los Angeles region as being our targeted zone. So there's a couple different uh, things we're going to have to assume here. The first one, of course, is we're going to have to assume that some of the bombers that were supposed to be intercepted by all the folks up here did successfully get intercepted. The second thing we're going to assume is each one of these targets is going to have one bomber associated with it. Now, if you remember when we set this up originally, we had Tupolev 16s as well as Tupolev 4s, are uh, the ones at the 4A, the one that actually carries the nuclear weapon. So we need to consider how many of those would have gotten down to our target here. So if taking a look around, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, looks like we have about 24 targets or so. Now, most of those bombers probably would have been chewed up by, again, the Royal Canadian Air Force or the United States Air Force, with the exceptions of the ones that probably came out to see here and kind of got out of radar range. So of the 24, by the time they get down here, we'll do a nice nasty estimate of let's say about 18 bombers totally got through. The other thing we're going to assume is the relationship between how many of the different types of bombers got through. Generally, the Tupolev 4As, if they were going to be coming directly down from here, would have been going out to sea and then kind of swinging back this way. Uh, the Tupolev 16s didn't have a choice. They have to go straight in. So when we plan where everybody's going to come from, we'll try to keep the Tupolev 4s out to sea. And we'll try to keep the Tupolev 16s basically using the Rocky Mountains here as some kind of coverage. Obviously, if you did a Tupolev 16 up this valley here, um, I mean, you could sample the nice wines and things like that. But it'd probably be a little less safe for you than traveling down one of these valleys here. So let's go ahead and get that set up first. So I'm going to go ahead and get my little editor here. I'll go ahead and switch to a red 4 here. Obviously, we have pretty good knowledge of all the targets in this region. There's plenty of them that we can do. We can do one of these if we wanted to and kind of select them all at once. If we wanted to, hey, Lancaster, isn't that Pennsylvania? So basically, what we're going to do is um, we can either manually create these, or if we want to be a little bit more advanced, is we can use Lua to go ahead and build it so that the bombers themselves will randomly appear somewhere around this. The nice thing about a technique like that is the fact that it's going to give us a little bit more um, entropy is the word I'm going to use here, even though randomness is probably the better word for it. So first things first, uh, let's figure out how long it's going to take those bombers to get from where I originally sent them to get all the way down here. So let's see, that's uh, 2,230 nautical miles. I'm sorry, I did that backwards. 2230 divided by 450 is a tuple of 16s. It's a 4.95. 0 0.95 times 60 is a 4 hours and 57 minutes for the tuple of 16s to get here. So we'll go ahead and advance the clock by four and a half hours here. So it'll be a 930 plus 4, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it'll be 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So let's go ahead and update the time right there. Press OK. So that puts our local time at about 6.30. Now, the problem is a 6.30 local time, and uh, this is a kind of interesting problem, is let me go over to the U.S. Air Force real quickly, and I'll grab my Georgia Air Force Base. You'll notice that all these F-86Ds are not able to launch because they are day-only aircraft. So even though, if I hold my mouse over here, it says, and it's difficult to see, that 6.30 is daytime, it's not actually daytime. It's basically dawn right now. Uh, one of the things you can always do if you want to kind of get a feel for that is you can always put day and night lighting on, and you can realize very clearly this is how dark it's going to be. So daytime fighters cannot operate. So unfortunately, a good chunk of my defenders, my actually very capable defenders, the F-86Ds, are absolutely worthless in this scenario. You know, we'd have to come all the way out here to the uh, basically our east coast of the United States before we could get enough sunshine. So from a gameplay perspective, this is actually garbage because unfortunately, all of our bombers are really, really good interceptors are going to be worthless here. We could trade to, of course, a newer version of the F-86 that is night capable, but I like to keep this 1955 theme. So we're going to go in here, we're going to go ahead and tweak the time up another two hours here, even though it's not really realistic. They'd never, ever attack when it's this bright outside. This would just be silly. So let's go ahead and grab George Air Force Base. Check them again. Uh, they'll be ready very, very, very shortly. I believe they'll be ready at about 845, which gives us plenty of time to go ahead and get everybody set up. So let's go ahead and switch back to Red 4 real quickly. Everything, by the way, is all set up here as far as the Air Force and the uh, civil targets. So we have two ways to do this. Like I said, we could do it manually, in which case the scenario is going to play the same way every single time, plus or minus, you know, RNGs is kind of a thing like that. But um, you know, I'm kind of feeling like making things a little bit complicated because I'm kind of a jerk like that. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a nice little Lewis script console here. You know, let's make this interesting. So we're going to execute this script every single time we go ahead and start our actual program itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause for a second and kind of bang out some of the basic stuff.
All right, we've taken care of some of the basics here, just to make sure everything works. So basically what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've created this little function here that says, get me all the stuff for that particular side. Then what we do is we kind of create a little variable here that's gonna keep track of how many possible targets there are. We're then going to have to calculate the center point of a circle that any of the bombers can appear along. You know, it'd be a bit of a surprise if the bomber came from Mexico, but hey, you never know. I mean, there was Cuba, right? So basically what we're gonna to have to do now is we're gonna to have to figure out exactly how to figure out where on a big arc here we could make the actual bombers up here. Remember, we're gonna have two different waves of bombers coming in at this point. So if we're gonna do that, we're actually gonna to have to do this whole process twice. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna figure out where the center longitude and latitude is here. So I'm just kinda of holding my mouse right here. We'll go kind of pick us. Uh, Norwalk sounds pretty good, maybe Torrance. Inglewood, uh, we'll do basically right downtown Fullerton. That sounds pretty good. So it looks like it is going to be, just kinda of checking it out real fast. I'm going to hold my mouse over here one more time. Uh, 3355. Five. So basically 34 is going to be uh, my latitude there, actually. And my longitude is going to be minus 118.2 uh, is what that's going to look like. So I have my center point that we're going to be generating all of our particular positions out of. So now what I need to do is I need to figure out where the points are on a random arc that kind of goes around the outside of it. So the way we're going to do this is that we're going to mess a little bit around here. So there's this great tool. We're going to go ahead and call it a local, um, let's call it uh, bomber lats equals zero just for now. We'll do local bomber lawn equals zero for now. So then we're going to come in here for latitude and longitude. We're going to say lat equals bomber lats. And lawn equals bomber lawn. Let's go ahead and clean this up real quick. Equals bomber lawn. Okay, so the nice thing is in Lua here, they give us this really, really cool tool that's basically called the get bearing from point. So one of the nicest little things that you can get this here. Here it is, get point from bearing. I love this uh, little piece of work here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna insert this command. So what this does is this basically takes two points and it will tell you what you need to do as far as, you know, what the actual point would be. And it returns those points so that we can actually convert them exactly where we need to convert them. So the way we're gonna use this here is I'm just gonna come up here to the table, is basically what you're going to do is you're going to tell it what your specific starting latitude is going to be. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, this is taking a table. So latitude equals, we're gonna do our center latitude, and we're gonna say longitude, L-O-N-G-itude equals our center longitude. And then we're gonna go ahead and say what distance from the target we want. Now we wanna design this so that we have one half of an hour in order for us to get there. So if we grab this, uh, one half of an hour is gonna be 220 nautical miles. So we'll go ahead and round that to 200, actually we'll be more specific here. Distance equals 200 nautical miles. And then bearing is going to be a random number. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a random number. We're gonna call this uh, local random bearing equals math.random. And we're gonna use everything between zero and 360. And of course, uh, anytime you wanna do anything involving random, you wanna make sure you randomize your table. So I'm actually gonna go up here and do math random seed. And uh, the fat, most common one I always use is gonna be OS time, because uh, basically whatever time it is, we'll go ahead and act as the random seed. So now we have a random bearing between zero and 360 degrees. And we also have the location, whoops, bearing equals, we should probably finish up my statement here, random bearing. So now we have the ability to go ahead and actually generate a random point that's exactly 200 nautical miles away from the center of my little location here. And of course, I never trust these things or the first time I run them because there's about a 100% chance that I made some goofy, goofy syntax error. And I'd rather not generate 6,000 bombers as I'm trying to test this. So what I am gonna do here is I'm gonna print out bomber lats. And I'm also gonna print out bomber lawn. I'm actually do a dot, 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 dot. And we're gonna say um, space. And then we're gonna go ahead and print out bomber lawn as well. Just to make sure I'm not doing something incredibly embarrassing here. Ready break. Aha, I knew I made a mistake. Always do that. All right, attempt to concatenate a global variable. Now let's see here, bomber lawn, blah, blah, blah. I'm just checking a look. Bomber lawn, oh, bomber, bomber. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look at this real quickly and I noticed that uh, none of it worked <laughs> because I forgot the extremely obvious thing. So what we'll do is uh, we'll go ahead and get one more local variable here. A position, pause. I'll call posi equals zero. This was my mistake, posi. I never actually saved that value. Come on folks, you're supposed to yell at me a lot louder than that. Bomber lat equals posi dot latitude. Bomber lawn equals posi dot longitude. All right, let's see if I was a little better this time. Yes. 
<laughs> that actually worked. Okay, so uh, this is great. I actually, I, I feel, I'm feeling confident today. Now I'm, ah, I got this. Cool. All right, so now we're going to do the dangerous thing here. We're going to test this. So before I ever test anything that has the word add unit in it, I can't recommend this enough. Go ahead and save your work real quick. So the way I do it is I do a control A and a control C kind of action in case this thing blows up on me. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to push a button. And it blew up against me. I know why, because I put an extra period there. Boop. And then uh, aircraft 73A1, which means, ah, that was a newbie mistake. All right, let's go up to tuple of 16A real quick here. A Badger A is the one I'm looking for. Badger A, Badger A, Badger A. 629. 629. All right, so we also need to confirm that we are using the appropriate loadout, which is 7381. Ah, I see what I did. 7381. Okay, fingers crossed, everybody. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Run. Oh, <laughs> look at that. You got to admit, that's actually pretty cool how that works. Now, the neat thing is we can run this every single time we start the scenario so that we can randomly generate all these nasty tuple of 16s here. And um, obviously, uh, now that we have this many tuple of 16s and a big, nice arc going around California, it's going to make a much more exciting time of the players. Now, remember, every time I run this code, I'm going to get a different layout of bombers here. Now, part of me is going, well, this seems like it's going to be kind of tough because that is literally as many targets as there are bombers kind of a thing like that. One of the things we were saying earlier is some of these bombers would have been thinned out a little bit by the time they got to us. So maybe we should just go ahead and uh, modify how many of them are, there are. You know what? I agree completely. So what we're going to do is we're going to roll a dice each time we go ahead and generate our bombers. We're going to say if the dice equals one thing to go give me a tuple of four. If the dice equals a different thing, we're going to make it the tuple of 16. So let's go ahead and clean all this junk out up here. Thank you, bombers. You've been wonderfully helpful. By the way, the perfect circle. Well done. I can't believe how accurate those navigators are. So let's do that. So I'm going to get myself another variable. Uh, we're going to call this a dice. Dice equals zero. Actually, math.random. We're going to do a four-sided dice. So if the dice comes up as a one, it's going to be a tuple of 16. If the dice comes up as a two, uh, we're going to go with a tuple of 4a. If the dice comes up as a three or four, there's going to be no bomber at all. So that's, uh, that's going to work fairly well. That's going to thin our numbers significantly. So what we might actually want to do is do four means it seems that they don't get through. Like a quarter of the bombers got destroyed. Yeah, I like that better. I like that better. All right, let's do it. So now I'm going to say if math, oops, sorry. If dice equal equals one, then boop, boop, boop. let's make sure end. All right, go ahead and space everything out. Okay, cool. So if it, the dice equals one, it's going to generate a tuple of 16. If the dice equals two, then we're going to generate a 2u4. So let's go up top here. Let's get the code for tu4a. Tu, this is, by the way, is a great way to make a game interesting. Uh, let's see, we need item 402 here. So I'm going to go 402. Uh, underneath what we have, let me take a look, take a look, take a look. We need to get ourselves an ru57, which is 865. 865. If dice equals two, uh, hold on just a second. If dice equals two or three, again, I just had to think this one through, or dice equal equals three, then we're going to get a tuple of 4a. Otherwise, we don't do anything. So basically what this will do is this will get us one quarter less bombers, and it will get us a random group of bombers, and it will randomly place these bombers for us, which is actually really cool. I'm going to copy my code again in case something terrible happens. Uh, let's go ahead and run the code. <laughs> That's so cool. So you can see here very quickly that every time I run the scenario, it gives me a random group of randomly placed bombers. So let's go up to my uh, game real quick and uh, do database uh, at video over here. Actually, not database. I'm going to do order of battle. And you can see I have this beautiful collection of random notes. There's more tuple of 4As than tuple of 16s. Ironically, it'd probably be the other way around. But uh, again, they would just throw 10 of these at us. So I'm going to go ahead and delete everybody again real quickly here. And I'm just getting warmed up here because uh, now we're going to have some more fun too. So the other thing I want to do is I want to have a random distance. I love this 200 business, but I feel like it's not... Again, that's that entropy piece again. So let me go ahead and play that. Do a random and distance. I'll call it distance jitter. Jitter. Distance jitter. Jitter equals math.random. I will do minus 50 to positive 50. I think that's a really good amount of jitter here. So then I can come up here and put my distance, distance, distance jitter right here. Let's go ahead and run the code now. Whoops. It helps if you spell it correctly. These are little small letters. I'm not going to lie. I wish I could make it bigger for you. Oh, look at that. 
you got to admit, that's pretty cool. So now we have randomly placed bombers that are all going to be on a suicide mission towards the middle here. So um, this is working pretty well so far, actually. So our next problem we're going to have to solve, though, is actually give all of these bombers actual targets to go ahead and engage. Now, the way I'm going to do that is going to be um, pretty straightforward. I'm going to create myself another loop that's going to go ahead and create all those bombers and tell them what to do. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go ahead and get myself a list of all the bombers that came into existence. So I'm going to say local um, called bombers equals VP get side. Side equals red force. I'm going to do one of those things dot units. So that'll get me a list of all the bombers in this scenario right now. I'm actually going to go and hashtag these two out. And what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to print this to make sure it works correctly. So again, nothing bad should happen here. Good. Everything worked beautifully. So now we're going to take all the bombers we have, KV in I pairs, bombers, and we're going to go ahead and give them something to do. So we're going to go ahead and clean this up real quick. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the bomber and we're going to have to give them the attack command. The attack command is a little complicated because basically what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using some code here that's going to go ahead and uh, attack a contact as opposed to a unit. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab that code real quick. I'm going to do send edit underscore attack contact. Ah, contact. Contact. So we're going to do the attacker ID. Now this is easy because we can just do v.goid. The contact ID on the flip side is going to be a little bit more different. We're going to use targets of k. Remember, k is uh, our iterator here. Targets of k.goid. <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and say the mode. So there's a couple different modes we can use. We can use mode 0, or we can use mode 1. I'm simply going to use mode 0, which means automatic. And we're going to go ahead and cap that whole thing off. That's it. So now 50-50 shot that I type this correctly. 99% um, of the time I get this wrong. So if you do the multiplication there, I have a 99.8% chance of probably messing up this code here. Run. Oh, did it work? <laughs> I'd be really amazed if that worked properly. So let's go ahead and uh, test this out real quick. All right, so let me just go do mental check here. Mental check, mental check. I can't believe that worked. I feel like it did not work. You know what I mean? Like one of those is where it's like, I think I just uh, psyched myself out here thinking this was going to work for me. Let me just mentally check this. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. But am I attacking the attack? No, that's correct. That's correct. I'm just confirming this real quickly. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and pause real quick and see what happens here. It worked. Got it. <laughs> it turns out that once in a while, hey, my 99, I was right. I was right. I got to stop doing statistics because clearly I'm garbage at them. Okay, so my code now completely generates an entire group of randomly placed targets with random units and assigns them random, actually, it's not random targets, it's sequential targets, but nobody needs to know. All right, mission accomplished. So I'm going to go ahead and delete everything here. Go ahead and clean all these guys out. Clean all these guys out. I am super excited that that worked. You got to admit, this Lua stuff is what makes this program so darn powerful. I just wish we picked something not Lua related. I'm, I don't know. I'm just an Lua syntax kind of a guy. Okay, so this is wonderful. We're going to go ahead and implement this code immediately. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that up. I'm going to grab all this hard work that I did and do some quick copy, copy, copy. I'm going to go up to Event Editor, Create an Event. I'm going to create a starting event. Uh, scenario started. Event is not repeatable. Event is active. Shown in log, 100% probability. So I'm going to go ahead and add myself a trigger. It says scenario is loaded. All that says is, did the scenario load? Uh, we're going to add a condition. And we're going to call this one yes. What does that condition actually say? It says the scenario has started. So not only is the scenario loaded, but the scenario starts. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, we already had this one from before called Barma's a go-go. This was uh, me trying to save my notes from last time. But I'm just going to repurpose it because I think it's great. Control-V. Ta-da! Let's go ahead and uh, grab the corners of this. So I basically copy-pasted all my code. This is all that hard work we just did a few minutes ago. It did a wonderful job ruining all my beautiful formatting that I just did. I'll go ahead and open that up for those folks who like to go ahead and... Oh, there really should be a little thing that I can grab right here to go ahead and pull it down. But now you can see all my handy-dandy work here. It looks like it's pretty good. I'm going to press the OK button. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm going to go ahead and add Bombers to go-go. Boop! Press OK. And now I am all set. When I fire this scenario up, this trigger should trigger and spawn in a bunch of folks that are going to rain nuclear death all over our good friends in Los Angeles, California. I'm going to go ahead and reset the time of day real quick in case anything bad happened to that effect. Copy. Save my scenario one more time. Let's go ahead and uh, red four. We're good to go. Looks good to me. Let's go ahead and try it out and see if it works correctly. Fingers crossed, everybody. ADC Nightmare. Our United States Air Force. I'm going to go switch to God's mode. 
hit spacebar, wait a couple seconds, and we'll see if that triggered properly. Let's go to Red Force, and I see nobody. Okay, let's see what happened. Let's see here, events, uh, is it active, it wasn't active, did it fire? The problem is I didn't see whether or not that fired, which is a little scary. If, uh, event is shown in log, let me see here. Event, event switch side, log element acting as scenario, this did not fire. So uh, that, that's, that's, that's not so good. Let's go ahead and uh, grab all this. Reset the time, we'll reopen the scenario. You, uh, we'll do red force here. Press enter scenario, looks pretty good here. We're gonna see what it says in the event editor. It says is active. Ah, it disabled itself somehow. So I'm gonna go ahead and say is repeatable. I'm gonna say is active. Again, you can only load the scenario once. Let's go ahead and save. Let's go ahead and flip this. I did I do this under special actions like a no, I did not do that under special actions. All right, let's go ahead and open the scenario one more time. US Air Force, press OK. Nothing's happened yet. And it still did not fire. Hmm. Uh, this kind of thing happens, by the way. We need to see. I don't know if it fired. It usually says down here if it fires or not. Switch side, log element acting scenario. It did not say that it actually fired, which means there's something wrong with my triggers. Scenario is loaded. I'm going to check to make sure that's set correctly, which it is. Uh, we have a thing that says yes. Going to go check that, make sure that works okay as well. Scenario has started. Scenario has started. That's correct. We're going to pop down here to my little action. I don't think I accidentally deleted anything when I did my copy pasting there. Again, we tested this scenario a minute ago. We know that this code works properly. All right, let me fix with it a bit. All right, I found out the mystery. So apparently when I had done that, I had set up my condition a little wrong and it was a little weird. Okay, let's see if this works. So I'm gonna go load racing. I'm gonna do ADC Nightmare. It's gonna ask me if the United States. It's gonna pop up and say that the bombers were placed. Let's see if they were actually placed. Yes, ha <laughs> ha, not bad at all. So uh, we're definitely uh, getting some success today. We're definitely getting some success here. So basically now I've got all my bombers randomly placed. Uh, they're gonna come flying at us. Our Bomark is gonna look I'm pretty much ready to rock at any moment. Uh, the only thing I'm a little worried about here before we go ahead and give the sucker a test is I wanna confirm that everything that we have here is you know basically kind of working before we get too, too carried away with everything else. I'm gonna shut off God's eye view. You know, one thing I do want to do is I want to get myself a radar station to kind of keep an eye on some of that trouble that's gonna be coming our way. So the first thing I'm actually gonna do, and this is gonna be kind of interesting, is I'm gonna tweak our sides just a teeny tiny bit here. I'm gonna get myself a surface ship. I'm gonna get myself one of my favorites, the Fletcher. Let's go get myself a 19, we'll do a 1954 version of the Fletcher here. We're gonna go ahead and grab that guy, turn on his active radar. I'm gonna kind of just have him kind of cruising along the coast here, doing his little Coast Guard kind of a thing here. Uh, next thing I want to do is I'm going to get myself kind of a radar station to keep an eye on some of this. These do, by the way, each one of these has their own air traffic control radar to kind of keep an eye on stuff, but there's nothing else beyond that. The other thing is I have this beautiful, wonderful Bowmark site, but it has no native radar station of its own. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to flip over to my relief layer. Take a look around. All right, California. Thank you. Yeah, so it looks to me like if we're going to put up a radar for the Bowmark, it's going to be on one of these really, really tall mountains up here. So let's go ahead and uh, grab the tippy top of this. Obviously, I'm sure the local uh, skiers would not appreciate us putting a radar dome at the top of this. But hey, we want to make it as interesting as we can and somewhat fair. So let's see what we got for tips here. Uh, we got the tips 1D, which is probably a little too new for us. Uh, we have the old tips, the tips uh, 1S. Uh, let's, can we do an SCR? Ah, don't even let us have the old SCRs. Oh man, this is lame. You're going to have to deal with something a little bit more old school here. Uh, we have the old FPSs. Uh, the FPS 19 is actually a little too new for us. Uh, we're going to see if we have any of the old SCRs. Uh, there we go. Actually, the FPS 7 makes sense. And FPS 8 is not too bad either. Uh, U.S. Air Force, it wouldn't be bad to have a height finder. That would definitely make our lives a little bit simpler. I'm going to go with the FPS 7 here. So let's go ahead and grab that one. And we'll go add on to that. We'll add a, a radar that will go ahead and get us some height finding information as well. Filter by keyword. We're going to get us an FPS 6. So now we have ourselves a little height finding kind of a secret radar mountain on the top of this mountain. I'm going to call this uh, EW site or something like that. EW sites. Go ahead and press OK. All right. So uh, the one thing we're going to have to do real quickly here is if you remember a moment ago that uh, trigger worked properly. And unfortunately, it gave us a bunch of targets. But uh, we don't want this because uh, we just want to test to see how this looks when we do a quick little run through. Again, I haven't programmed any of the fancy events here. So I'm clean all this up. Clean all this up. Clean that up. Clean that up. Cool. So let's go ahead and pop off that relief layer. We don't need to look at that anymore. Um, we know that my event fire is okay now, and uh, that sounds pretty good to me. This looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, make sure the time of day is good. Save the scenario, and we'll go ahead and try one more time just to make sure everything's working properly. All right, so select the United States Air Force. It's gonna pop up and say bombers have been placed. And let's go ahead and give this scenario a quick test. So I'm gonna go ahead and unpause. We immediately get a bunch of contacts, so it's, um, 
Okay, it seems to be working okay. We're getting some altitude information. You can see all these contacts, remember, completely randomly generated. So they're going to come flying at us on their own. We haven't been able to height find these guys just yet. But uh, once they get in the range of my handy dandy little EW site, let me flip that on now. There we go. We'll immediately be able to identify them in both altitude as well as in uh, azimuth as speed and stuff like that. Okay, let's start uh, building up my strategy here. So the stupid thing here is to go ahead and just uh, start throwing people at these guys. You know, I'd rather do this kind of manually. So I'm going to scoop up this bunch of folks, and I'm going to use these guys. We'll call these intercept. So we'll call this intercept west. Go ahead and get a good group of aircraft. We're plenty to play with. I'm going to throw all of our F-89s at them. And then we're going to throw up some F-94s. I have tons of F-94s in this part of California. So we'll add up a bunch of F-94s. We'll keep them in small groups. And basically spam, 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 spam our whole way there. I'm not going to do pre planned targets because they just don't need to. Um, let's see here. We'll mark these guys all as hostile because um, we already got a warning from the folks up in California, or I should say in Oregon and Washington, that they're coming. So we got that group. Uh, we got this group to the top. That, to me, looks like it's going to be a barrier cap. So I'm going to quickly uh, go ahead and create myself a new area, add a reference point, a rectangle. We'll go ahead and set up a barrier cap right along here like this. This looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and uh, press F11 here. We're going to call this one Create New Mission. Call it Bar Cap. Go ahead and say Patrol. Go ahead, set this to AAW, press OK. We're going to make sure that's like this. I want everybody in the air. Investigate, yep, 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 yep. That's what we want. We're going to go ahead and throw up the, um, let's see here, we have some F-89Es, which are amazing for this purpose. And we also have more F-94s. We'll go ahead and throw some of those guys at that. Delightful. And we also have some F-86Ds, but they're not going to be available until about 15, 20 minutes into the scenario itself. So that at least we're going to have some safety going on over that place. Then, of course, my last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to do one more area. I'm going to go ahead and define it kind of over Los Angeles itself. I'm going to call this a dragnet just because it's hilarious. Go ahead, set that to a patrol, press OK. And anything I have left, I'm going to basically throw there. So I think I have some F-94s left. Nope, I don't even have F-94s. <laughs> so I'm going to put the F-86Ds on this job. And now, though, as soon as they get airborne, and once the weather cleans up a little bit, they're going to go start doing their thing just like that. And they'll start defining that area as well. And again, I'm throwing everybody out there. So uh, we're ready to rock. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause here. Everybody's going to immediately be running out to their jets. I'm sure you've seen plenty of propaganda footage of the 1950s. Keep in mind, our closest guy is about 117 nautical miles away, if you want to do the math on that one. That gets us uh, 60, it's gonna be 15 minutes and six, six, uh, 15 minutes and 38 seconds or something like that before the first bomber is going to get within range. So unfortunately, I can't, I don't have any missiles on this old version of the Fletcher, but I am gonna bring them up to full speed to kind of keep an eye on things. So we're good to go. And then we can see the Bomark sites are already doing their thing. We've already given approval to go ahead and use our nuclear weapons. So we're gonna use them here. Off they go. Come on, Bomark, come on, Bomark, go, 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 go. Bam! And we can also see our Air Force types are getting airborne immediately, as fast as they possibly can. Oh man, oh, the scenario already runs so much better than the last version did. All right, good luck everybody. Stay on target. Looks like our F-86s are doing their job nicely. Come on, Bomark. I love the concept of a cruise missile SAM. Oh shoot, they're coming in the south. All right, we need to order some attacks down that way. Um, I think this would be where you make your Star Wars comment. There's just too many of them. And it looks like our Sams are doing what we can here. Those guys are going for it. They're going to break three. Our Ajax batteries are going to town. Come on, Ajax. Come on, Ajax. Let's get ourselves a nice 3D view here. I'm actually getting a little excited. Let's see, Ajax, Ajax. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. See, oh my gosh, look at this from a 3D perspective. This is nutty. Let's go to the Moreno Valley here. Yeah, it looks like oh, we definitely have some trouble. People of 16 is getting tracked down by an F-89D. Remember, the F-89Ds were equipped with rockets as their primary weapon here. Tupolev is running, Tupolev is running. We're not actually going to see the rockets fly the Tupolev 16 here. It's just going to basically rear end the guy. Or the Tupolev 16 is going to shoot down the F-89. Hey, 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 don't overshoot! I haven't done that 600 times on a flight simulator before. Careful, careful! <laughs> let's see how everything else is looking let's watch my little ajax here he's uh, diving down onto the target again the thing i loved about this missile and i've gushed about this particular system before is the fact that it doesn't have a tv display it has a piece of paper it draws on to tell you the path of the projectile which i just get a kick out of that all right let's see here and everybody's getting a run so far california is looking pretty good we've lost several aircraft uh, let's go ahead and do a control shift f9 here 
Um, let's see here. Terminate mission. Fuel state. Uh, fuel state. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I should have done this. Well, that sucks. That means all those bombers that I just launched are all going to dive. And uh, unfortunately, California is about to get several nuclear weapons launched at. <gasps> we did it! So for whatever reason, this guy is uh, freaking out here. I'm going to actually unassign you. And I'm going to order you to attack these manually. Get over there and shoot them, will you? Oh, you forgot the other one. Get back over there. It's a duple of four. All right, you're just being weird then. Go home. <laughs> Let's see if I can borrow this guy. Ha! There we are. Destroy that duple of four, please. Spin it around. And instead of doing what I asked you to do, you decide to go land. You must have run out of fuel. So unfortunately, this duple of four has got the spinnies, which is uh, something we saw a little bit earlier. Uh, chances are it was a target that was invalid to begin with. Unfortunately, my Bowmark site does not have any missiles left. Otherwise, I could give him a nasty surprise. Let's go ahead and grab this guy. Do you got enough fuel on board? Yeah, you do. And it's time. Move you over here. Go ahead and give you a surprise. Do something about that bomber, please. And you ran out of fuel and got shot at. Well, I guess this guy's just going to be kind of hanging out there for the next week or so. All right, it looks like uh, everything kind of went okay here. So let's go ahead and pop up my little losses and expenditures and see how things went. I lost a bunch of sabers, a lot of scorpions. We actually used to have one of these at the Air Museum. A few starfires. Uh, let's see here. We went through an awful lot of rockets. And let's see how we did on this side. The U.S. Army didn't get hit. Um, Civili. Oh, we lost a city. No. This should be automatic. Like, I think it should pop up and say, you lose. But we'll do that next time. Um, let's see here. As far as these guys goes, uh, they threw up a lot of bombers at us. They all got slapped down. And you can see they actually deployed six nuclear weapons. So whatever did get hit, uh, it must have dudded out or something like that. All right, this seems like a pretty good place to kind of pause things. This is pretty good. I think uh, we could do one more part where we put on all the events and detections and stuff like that. But other than that, enjoy.